Henshin Inspection presents Going Ultra. This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an analyzer. Join me as I talk about episode 9 of Ultraman Arc, which is entitled Goodbye Rin. So, uh, we have this really interesting concept where there's this Mr. Yamagami who Rin met in high school. Well, he was in college as a professor, and she was a high school student, and she was interested in mechanical engineering and other stuff with kaiju and she wanted to build robots and whatever and uh she ended up meeting him because he was being hired by skip let's just say um to build some sort of robot that can do whatever which may not be up may or may not be up i'm unclear as to whether uh rin is the one who created up or if maybe it was this guy or maybe somehow they're working together i don't know whatever um but uh yeah so she fell in love with this guy as a high school student, and he was already a professor and uh, in college, and he had a girlfriend, apparently, and he was getting married, and she knew about this, and it really kind of muddies the water, but it was really like an emotionally charged episode, and I actually liked the human drama so much um, that I it was probably, I don't know, three quarters through the episode, and I thought, are there, is there going to be a kaiju fight in this? Is Ultraman Art going to show up? Because I don't really need him to. This is like a good episode on its own. It doesn't really need uh, the kaiju stuff to happen for me to be invested because it's about kaiju stuff ostensibly, but it's also uh, about these human interactions, these human relationships. And like the kaiju stuff, you know, Naranga shows up in the beginning. They put him to sleep. They think he's dead, I guess, when they've harvested stuff from him, but he's just hibernating. I'm not sure how they couldn't quite tell that, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. Uh, you know, he's just... Um, Yamagami's this mentor, and he has this relationship with Rin, and at the end, we see that they spent a lot of time together. They were eating noodles together. They were getting ice cream together, and all this stuff, and earlier, we get a, a clue that she knew that he was married. He's, oh, I'm waiting for my wedding plans, and he lies to his wife in, or somebody attached to his wife or his family and attached to his marriage because he's waiting. He's late to he's wait to do he's late to do his wedding planning, um, and he does his little tell where when he lies he touches his lip, um, and uh, Rin knows that and yet she's pining for this guy all this time and you can even see in the actress's face when he mentioned that he had a baby and he'd become a father and her face like drops like there's just like this micro expression of like oh not only are you married but you have a kid like I was hoping you were divorced by now and I could marry you instead. Um, and, uh, like, that's really interesting. Um, not that I like for people that, like, you know, hope for other people's marriages to dissolve or be destroyed or whatever, but, uh, like, there's something semi-romantic about a second chance romance where perhaps, uh, like, if this guy's wife had died or, you know, whatever, um, and then Rin swooped in and was like, hey, I've been in love with you since I was a kid and I'm, I'm in it, you know, let's do this. Um, like, there would be something cool there, but that's not what happened here, um, at all. And, uh, but, like, I, I get it. I, I, I get it, I get the draw. I see, um, yeah, he's, a, he's a handsome guy, so why not? Um, but like, I, I get what's going on there. And like, I get on a, like, you know, lizard brain level, like human psychology, like we like those kinds of stories. Um, and some people like them. Well, th there's severity. Sometimes it's, you know, while things are separated and sometimes people like to make the separation and that's not good stuff. So anyway, they didn't go there at all with this, which is nice. Um, and like, I really liked it at the end of the episode when they're having their confrontation, she, almost breaks down and almost admits that she loved him all that time. And that, you know, she says, I love those times that we had together. And this was really cool too, that he walks past her and he says, I don't even remember. Like that was so long ago. I don't even remember it. And he takes a couple more steps and he does his tell and you can know he's lying. And I think in a way, maybe he loved her too. Um, but of course it was a forbidden love. He was already engaged to somebody else. He was already getting married. So like, no, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. And, uh, that's very bad. And he didn't. So like there's shows like some moral clarity, like, even though I think it was kind of scummy for him to be hanging out with this high school girl, um, who he may or may not have had feelings for while he was like, that shouldn't matter. He shouldn't have been hanging out with her like that in any context while he was engaged. I know I'm not talking about Ultraman stuff. I'm talking about relationship stuff, but that's what happened this episode. I will talk about the Ultraman stuff soon. Um, and the sci-fi elements of it in a little bit, but just give this to me. Okay. Give this to me. Anyway. So this is like great. This is a great, exciting episode and, uh, and you just have to live with it. So anyway, um, he was kind of scummy then, but there is a mark of principles in him because like he went ahead and married his wife. He didn't keep in contact with Rin. Like she hadn't heard anything about him because he was distancing himself from her. So while it wasn't quite the way I wanted it to be or the way I would have liked it to be, he, um, like showed some moral character 
and he showed some goodness. So maybe, just maybe, him selling black market cells, uh, kaiju cell, or him selling kaiju cells on the black market might not be that he's this awful criminal. It might be that he sees a hole in the market. He sees a hole in the future. He sees a gap that humans need to close in order for the future to be secured for all of mankind, for all of mankind to benefit. And yeah, he's going to sell this stuff at exorbitant prices at black market rates. Um, and he's going to make all this money and then he's going to dump that money into researching how to harness kaiju for whatever their abilities are so that they can be used to positive ends in the future. In Ultraman Z, they use Naranga's horn to accelerate the charging of Wyndham. And because it took like 24 hours or 72 hours or whatever at first, and then with the Naranga horn, it ended up taking like five hours or something super good um, in order for uh, Wyndham to be powered up. And Ultraman Z, Ultraman Z stole Nikizichi, Nikiji, the, the snake gods, the rainbow snake god, uh, he stole that kaiju's power uh, and turned it into his rainbow slash, I think is what he called it. And he kind of got the Tilsonite thing too, and that was associated with the kaiju. There was a little kaiju picture on the, the Blazar stone. So, uh, and like, isn't, isn't Ultraman X, he uses like cyber arms or whatever that are like kaiju parts or something? Anyway, so like Ultraman in the past have used kaiju parts and uh, like the science patrol type organization behind Ultraman have used these things in the past to do things and make the world a better place. And if we're going to argue, and I, I'm still very unclear on this, and I, I don't remember what your name is, I'm sorry, uh, but you commented to me previously that this K-Day was only space kaiju coming in, and we've had Earth kaiju in Ultraman Arc's world. Uh, I don't see proof for that in the uh, in the show itself, especially because we have things like, um, well, hold on, let me pause. Um it almost seems like they don't know that in the world of Ultraman Arc. Because, for example, in the Olivia Jira episode, when uh, uh, they talked about the fossil that had been found, it's a fossil of Olivia Jira. So that means that it was a long, it was here on Earth long enough ago to be to have been fossilized. But maybe kaiju were ancient, and maybe they were reawakened by Katie. Like I could definitely buy that, but it sounds to me as if they didn't know that there were kaiju because. Um, Bon? Is it? Yeah, Hiroshi Bon, uh, his mentor, his mentor, the, the dinosaur guy, um, said, oh, there's no way that this tooth could be a real thing. Like, it must have been a dinosaur. It wasn't a kaiju. It, it was, you know, something else. And, you know, the animal that this would have come from would have been, like, too gigantic. And he didn't believe him. And then later on, on K-Day, they found out that kaiju were real. Um, I don't know. Um, they found out that kaiju were real. And then he was like, oops, I was wrong to have told you no. So, like, I'm still not clear on in the world of... Ultraman Arc, which I believe is in its own independent Ultraman universe, do they have, have they always had kaiju on Earth and have people known throughout history? Because I, I brought that up in the, the Homger episode that it didn't make sense to me. They, they were like breaking their own canon in order to, to make this point. However, the Livigera fossil, fossil uh, suggests that kaiju have been on Ultraman Arc's Earth all this time. And I think that needs to be explored a little bit more and made more clear to me. Uh, I'm... I'm not an Ultraman noob anymore. Like, I've been around for a little while, and I haven't watched, like, a ton of series. But from what I've seen, like, it's usually much more clear that, oh, yeah, we've always had kaiju. We've always known about kaiju. Whereas, like, the premise of this show makes it sound like they didn't have kaiju until 16 years ago. And uh, that's still kind of, like, that's where I'm coming from with this. And that kind of blows my mind. So why is it wrong for these people to try to take what apparently is a natural resource now, it's something that exists in the world, and try to use it for good, try to use it to help people? Obviously, you could say it's not wrong for the collective to do that, but it's wrong for one guy to try to do that. And I wholeheartedly disagree with that. If one guy didn't try to do stuff throughout history, we wouldn't have a lot of the great advances that we have. A lot of people wouldn't be helped in the way that we have. A lot of us wouldn't be benefiting from that. And there are untold millions, if not billions, who have benefited from um, electricity and from, you know, uh, Louis Pester's uh, findings and like the you know, cowpox vaccine and like, there's lots of different things. Um, you know, people, uh, like apparently, apparently in the, uh, the ISS, um, two astronauts were abandoned and NASA or Boeing couldn't get somebody up there. So Elon Musk sent one of his rockets up there to go get them. I don't know if that's happened yet or not. It's, uh, you know, the airing of, which is, it's within the airing of, of Ultraman Arc Episode 9. And I just heard about that like a couple of weeks ago that that was going to happen. And like, great, good for those people that they don't have to die up there alone in space. Um, because, uh, there's nobody to get them out when this, you know, 
private crazy guy who's pursuing his dreams or whatever, uh, agree with him or don't agree with him. I really have no strong opinions about the guy, guy either way. Um, especially his personal life. That's his, his, his deal. But like, you know, thank God for these people, uh, that this guy has his obsession that he started like 10, 15 years ago. I don't even know how long ago SpaceX was a thing. And now he's got this rocket thing go up and, and help save these people. Like, that's a good thing. That is a good thing. Like, Boom. Like, I don't care what you think about the guy. That is a good thing. That is a moral good that is happening because of this one guy's obsession. And, um, you know, Yamagami is trying to make the same sort of thing happen. Maybe. We're not 100% sure, but it seems like there's a morality there. It seems like there's something good in him. Like, when he was making some of these claims, he didn't touch his lip. Like, he's, he sincerely believes those things, even if he's misguided. And I think it's really interesting, this this idea of upcycling kaiju. Like, you kill a kaiju, and then you have its body parts there, and you can use its body, its cells, its physiology, whatever, um, in some way to fashion a thing. Um, like, they even used... Oh, no, there's the, the, the Dymo, whatever, uh, from the company that made Newsatron isn't necessarily derived from a kaiju, or I don't know if it's derived from a kaiju or not. It's that bacteria stuff. It's the bacteria in the electric rat. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that specifically, but, like... They're doing things in this world to make the world a better place with the use of kaiju stuff. And I don't see anything wrong with that. And I think it's something interesting that should be explored. And, you know, um, Ultraman Blazar, for example, they built uh, Earth Garon with, I'll just say with technologies for, to free you from spoilers. But there's a secret there. You gotta watch the show. It's pretty good, actually. Um, and if you uh, think about it, like there could be a tame kaiju or there could be a like genetically engineered kaiju, which I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> um, uh, me, you don't know me, but the fact that I'm saying there could be a genetically engineered kaiju in this sci-fi show, yeah, you could totally do that. Like a good kaiju that helps people instead. And like, that's what Earth is depending upon uh, to help save them from kaiju, uh, kaiju attacks. And then an Ultraman also joins the show and does whatever. Like that could totally be a thing, but like, you know, why not? Um, why not? Uh, I've basically gone through all my notes, so I'm going to go ahead and stop there. What did you think? You think I'm crazy for suggesting that Yamagami isn't like this awful guy? Do you agree that he's a little scummy with his wife and having a high school girl that he hangs out with on the side, you know, back in the day before he was married, so I guess it was okay, but probably not. Um, like, do, do you like the human drama? Did you even want Ultraman in here? Oh, I guess I should talk about it. He used the sun armor, and it was cool, and he fought two kaiju at the same time, and they're related to each other or whatever. They're uh, Niranga and... Uh, something or other which produces a golden rainbow in the sky which is pretty cool when it's about to attack i don't know exactly how a rainbow comes from the sky while the guy is underground but that is something that happens let me just to do uh to do my due diligence uh talk about the record so it's niranga and pagos and i like i like one other thing here which is that you know they both kind of have similar abilities and um yamagami talks about the fact that they might be related to each other and if they can find a common ancestor to them then they can figure out a way to combat them and things like that and that's that's pretty cool but um i don't know it was interesting like they made her in a spy and then she came out and told him that she wanted to help him and the way that all played out was really cool because she's like i never lied to you because this and she said you become a good liar like that was all really good human drama stuff too and it's like no she sincerely wanted to help him she's saying like you're going down a wrong path you're going to a place i can't follow you and um Sorry, I, I seriously got Anakin vibes from this guy. It was super cool. Um, or Hayden Christensen vibes, I should say. Uh, anyway, and he, you know, thought that she was lying. And she's just being sincere and honest. Like, no, I don't want you going down this criminal path. And I want you to stop. And I want you to tone. And I want you to go back uh, from what you were doing. And she meant that sincerely. And he took it in this different way. And I don't know. It was just, it was a great human drama. There's the kaiju for you too, I guess, if you have to have kaiju in your Ultraman show. I don't always, apparently. Um... And anyway, I don't know. Tell me what you thought. Tell me what you thought about everything I had to say here. I'm really curious to see uh, if people think I'm nuts or if people kind of agree with me. And uh, if you, there's other ultra shows where they've done like more like upcycling of or harvesting of or like using kaiju abilities for benefiting humans uh, and the world, I would love to know about that. So if you could tell me, that'd be super great. Anyway, um, last thing I want to say, uh, you can find this show at mjmoons.com. I'd like you to subscribe, to like, to share. Uh, to tell other people about this. I'm doing my darndest to grow this channel. I'm doing shorts over on YouTube, and those are getting a lot of views, or a decent amount of views. They can get more, and uh, they're pointing to these episodes, these full reviews as they go up, but they're like, for each episode, I'll have like a one-minute thing, um, and I'm really trying to, to push myself to produce more good stuff, more good quality content for you, talking about these shows uh, that I like so much and that you like so much, and um, I'm also working on writing lots of fiction stories, uh, and building up an email list so I can, when I'm ready to release books that have magical bugs battling monsters, for example. And if you're interested in that, cause you're interested in watching a magical 
guy, space guy, battle with giant monsters, um, you might be interested in checking out my stuff as well. So I encourage you to stay tuned for me to, uh, well, go to the website where I'll be releasing updates and then also uh, stay tuned for me to uh, share with you when I'm putting out my newsletter and when I'm going to be publishing my books. And um, yeah, I would appreciate you uh, checking those things out, especially because uh, you seem to enjoy what I have here for you. So I think you'll enjoy what I have over there for you as well. So until next time, folks, take care, be well, and be ultra. I hope you enjoyed that. Subscribe to keep up with me. Like and share to help me reach more people like you. And go to mjmunoz.com to find your next favorite thing. And don't forget to let your voice be heard. Stories are always better when you're part of the conversation. Until next time, be well. This is MJ, signing out. This has been a Story Over Everything production.